Hello, welcome to Unlimited Adventures. In this video, I wanted to cover the Buffy the Vampire Slaver tabletop RPG. This is a great game and a lot of fun when you play it. So let's get into this amazing game. With a few house rules, this game is a blast to run with friends. So let's break it down. Buffy the Vampire Slayer Tabletop RPG was published by Eden Studios in 2002. So this game is about 21 years old. The game runs off of the Unisystem. This system has two subtypes, classic and cinematic. I can't speak on the classic version because I have not actually played it, but, but I have played the cinematic version with this and it's a lot of fun. There is also an Angel Core book. There was only one book put out for this. I'll get into that in a bit. So I've kind of lumped everything together. The game has a total of four books, five if you include the Angel Core book. These books are the Core Book Revised, Slayer's Handbook, Monster Smackdown, and the Magic Box. Angel has its own standalone Core Book, but they both run off of the same system, so I just fold them all in together like I said before. There were supposed to be two other books released, those being T and Crossbows, a book about the Watchers, and Investigator's Casebook, which is for the Angel game that was due out... But they lost their license from Fox, and the game was only in publication for four years. The resources they have out now are still great, and it's pretty easy to make house rules for this game once you get the system down. The books cover one through five. Well, at least most of them do. The Slayer's Handbook, Monster Smackdown, and Magic Box cover one through five in terms of lore. The revised core book has all the way through season seven. It does not cover the comic books, though, and anything that came after. The chapter on characters from the show gives an update on all of them and how to progress their sheets if you want to have them as NPCs or actually have your players play them. Each of the books adds more qualities, which is something I'll get into in a bit. The Magic Box gives a breakdown of spell casting and psychic abilities. Monster Smackdown explains vampires, demons, and other basic things. It's a monstrous manual for the setting. Slayer's Handbook covers everything Slayer, including playing in different time periods and locations in reality of parallel dimensions. While I wish there was more books, you still have an awesome time and this is absolutely fantastic with some house rules done. The cinematic Unisystem focuses more on drama and RP than the raw mechanics. It encourages you to animate and draw out the scene more for the director side of things. This game uses a single T10 with a difficulty chart. Your roles consist of your attribute plus your skill plus any qualities that might affect that role. So say you want to swing an axe and attempt to bury it in a demon's head. You are playing a slayer. You have seven strength and five getting medieval, which is your melee skill. All that training is paying off. You roll the D10 and and add the 12 to it. If your roll meets or beats the defense or combat score of your target, you do damage. Damage for an axe is your strength score times five. If you rolled on the success table and you rolled really well, you add a few more points of damage. It's pretty simple like other tabletop role-playing games. Next up, drama points. These things are how you survive impossible odds and do crazy over-the-top things like decapitating a demon with an axe that's a football field away. Characters start the game with 10 or 20 drama points, depending on the character type, but these are not easily regained. They are rewarded through performance Performing heroic feats, the director can dole them out as they wish. When you have something really bad happen to you, the cast may get some from karma. Finally, drama points are also earned by the players helping recreate the feel of the Buffy the Vampire Slayer television show by helping develop storylines and subplots beyond the basic killing monsters scenario. Drama points are used for five things in this game. Heroic feats, this gives you plus 10 to any attack roll, defense roll, skill roll, or damage. Next, I think I'm okay. Yes, that's what it's called. Let's you shrug off those beatings that would make a football player go to the ICU. By spending a drama point, you heal half the damage taken in that round. So if you took 23, it becomes 11. That's the whole round. Third plot twist, drama can be done. Like you just say, hey, just crazy plot twist happens. Like somebody drops a key clue to something important. Allies showing up in the nick of time. Things like that. This can be nixed by the director though. So be careful if you use it. There is Righteous Fury. Your character gets so mad they get five extra attacks. Lastly, coming back from the dead. You can use this. Yes, that's right. It is hard to keep you dead in this game. But you can do it. You can come back as a ghost. You can come back as a robot. It's a miracle in the ER, whatever. Drama points are fantastic for things like this, and it just adds to the overall greatness and feel of this game. 
In the Buffy core book, the character type dictates your role in the game. There are three total. There's three more in Angel, but we're not getting into them here today. The three from Buffy are Experienced Hero, Hero, and White Hat. These dictate how many points you get to put towards your attributes, skills, and qualities. Heroes would be things like New Slayer, Initiative Agent, Experienced Watchers. White Hats are just normal people finding themselves wrapped up in whatever's going on, like Buffy Scooby Gang. Experienced heroes are just the things that are crazy, like Immortal Swordsman or Bioengineered Super Soldier from the future. Most directors don't want experienced heroes right out of the gate it tends to overshadow everybody else in terms of sheer what they can do most games are just heroes in white hats i like heroes myself but if a player wants to play a white hat i wouldn't say no most of the time i give them a choice a difference between the two is these points that you get especially the drama points once you have all that down, you go through character creation, choosing ability, skills, qualities, and drawbacks. The qualities and drawbacks are much like the classic World of Darkness merits and flaw systems. You use points for qualities and you gain points for drawbacks. You can have slayers wear glasses and have it issues with seeing and hitting things without them. A Velma Slayer? Come on, seriously. You can have one with a raging case of ADHD or depression. Heck, you can even take both. It's possible. I really enjoy these kind of things as it helps you flesh out your character who they were and who they will become the game overall is a lot of fun and you don't need to know every ounce of buffy lore to have fun with it basics work fine there's slayers there's watchers there's witches you kill monsters you can make what you want heck you can even adapt the system for other things once you get in there you just might fall in love with this the game has been out for so long i wanted it to get some attention it needs it it deserves more the books are available on drive through rpg and you can find them in the video description below in the next video i will be making a character for this just to show you how it's done if i can find players to play this i have an idea for a short campaign for this so let me know what you want to see Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think of this system in the comments below. Like the game, hate the game, never heard of it, and thanks for bringing it to my attention. Anything is great. If you enjoyed this, give a like and a sub, and I plan on covering older games more often. Catch you in the next one.